This is a short uh, demonstration uh, about the menu structures between the Lotus 123 spreadsheet application and Borland's initial uh, release of Quattro Pro. And this is in support of the analysis of menu trees from a copyrightability standpoint for computer software applications. Uh, in a, from an academic standpoint, we typically hear that the menu items were virtually identical. Uh, however, I, th I think it's valuable to at least look at them to uh, talk about just a few other things. So, let's first, this is Lotus 1, 2, 3. You'll notice this is a text-based application, which was around before Windows or Windows-based operating systems came to be and we can type in some numbers here and then I can write a function say so give me the sum of all the cells between A1 and A4 it correctly tells me 10 because that is a smart spreadsheet so in order to access the menu for this spreadsheet we hit the slash key and you'll see this text pop up the stuff in the top row is the, the menu main items and as you switch to those the selections uh, available from that node appear below. If I wish to, wish to select one, I can type the first letter, for example, move. If I hit M, it will pick that one. I'll hit M for move, and now it's asking me which what to move from. So I can hit uh, escape, and it gets me back out of that. Um, so this is kind of how the menu structure worked. Um, I could as a basis for a macro really I can oops I don't want to do that I can do slash and then C for copy and say A6 to A9 and it copied um, those values copy that function actually to the new cell and move the reference cells correspondingly. So by un by just typing keys, I could access the whole range of functions available to the spreadsheet, which was pretty novel at the time. Um, you'll notice there isn't a whole lot of expression in this. The text is just kind of there. There, it's not especially colorful or ornamental, or or difficult to tackle from a copyright standpoint. However, the district court did did attempt to make this menu structure copyrightable by saying this menu structure is expressive because of the choice of words used. For example, instead of copy, they could have said duplicate or reproduce, but instead the authors picked copy. And so all these other words and their choice of words uh, were protectable as as expressed in that form. Uh, additionally, I think it's uh, discussed whether or not it could be copyrightable as a compilation of literal elements, um, and that still hasn't really worked its way uh, very well through the court system. So let's let's kill this program and let's go back and look at the initial version of Quattro Pro. Uh, first, let's look at this is the Quattro Pro version that actually had the Lotus 1, 2, 3 menu structure in it. You'll see all the kind of same function. I can type in numbers and I can and the functions are the same. I can say the sum of A1 to A4 and it also gives me the right number. I can hit slash and it's like say copy and I can click A6 and go down and copy that function and you'll see all exactly the same things happen um, but you'll notice as you look at the menu that even though the literal elements are virtually identical there's some color involved um, the initial letters of each one is, is a different color to help maybe identify which key to be pressed to go to that menu item and so for the most part it's even though it's identical it's it's not really identical literally. So those are important things to consider and to understand as 
as a legal person is talking about uh, Lotus v. Borland uh, from a copyrightable standpoint. So that's that's kind of a demonstration of of the differences. Maybe helps give a little more insight on on why the courts ruled the way they did. Um, and if we just look at the Quattro Pro program that did not have a Lotus One Two Three menu, you can see there's no menu up there. Everything still functions the same. Um, but if I hit the slash key, the same key used in Lotus, the um, the menu pops up over here, and it kind of functions the same way. But you'll notice that the the tree is simply different. Functions the same. I can hit I can hit a column, and I can change the the column width and change that to 4 for a smaller column and I can then quit out of the menu structure and so even though functionally it kind of did the same stuff the menu item was different uh, but then that Lotus 1-2-3 menu was provided as an alternative to those who didn't want to learn the whole new menu system and that, that has its own set of issues so I hope you enjoyed the presentation and hopefully it's beneficial to at least one other person besides myself. Thank you and goodbye.